Hi, my name is Tom O'Key. Welcome to Joshua Tree. Here at the Joshua Tree Astronomy Arts Theater, here at the Joshua Tree Lake Campground, and uh, this is the home of the Southern California Desert Video Astronomers. Our group does public outreach astronomy, and we primarily use high-tech video astro cameras to be able to bring outer space experiences to people on live projected uh, screens. People who do melon camming, which is what we call it, uh, all enjoy sharing the images from their telescopes, and this is what we do. And these fellows here, Mark Bahu and Mike Chipnick, they are very experienced astronomers. They have melon cams, and they uh, share their images with people uh, in their neighborhoods, which Mark comes from from uh, Ventura, Ventura yes. and you're from Simi Valley. Right. That's right. And Mike was actually president of the a Ventura Club for about a decade, and their club has got about 150 members, and they've been involved in public outreach for a long time, and Mike is very familiar with oh, being yeah. able to help uh, show people things they never saw, get appreciation for what our universe is all about, and uh, these guys are high-tech gurus. They understand everything about the wires and the bells and whistles that make these cameras, the Mellon Cam, and these telescopes uh, absolutely zing uh, deep sky images, and they also travel quite a bit and go to different places. And and uh, Mark, do you want to just talk talk about your equipment a little bit and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Mark Bahu, and uh, I, I uh, love uh, astronomy, and I fell in love with video astronomy uh, actually by hearing about and seeing on on uh, before NSM was created uh, the Malin Cam in action, and uh, uh, so I bought an MCHP, which I've got. Uh, uh, on the Takahashi here, and we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. And I, but I have a Malincam Extreme mounted on the C9 here, and I used that last night to go, very good effect. Uh, it works very well, and I had uh, looked at a lot of different kinds of objects uh, and uh, utilized the uh, cloud penetrating capabilities of it somewhat, and that we had a lot of high cirrus last night, but we were still able to get good results with the Mountain Cam Extreme uh, on that C9. On the Takahashi, I have an MCHP, uh, which uh, on a TOA-130, and we'll be using that and, uh, and the C9 both uh, this evening to observe. And I also have a Mountain Cam Junior right here, which is going to be mounted on the 80 millimeter uh, Stellaview uh, refractor that's coaxial with the Takahashi. And so we're going to be experimenting to see what we can get with the junior and the eta millimeter. And uh, that, that'll that be the extent of our activities here. Mike has got a C11, and he'll talk to you about that. And we'll probably move the Mountain Cam uh, Extreme and the MCHP both to the C11 off and on during the evening. So we're going to use all three optical tubes with both cameras. Now, you've been doing astronomy for quite a while and you've had uh, lots of equipment over the years. How has this changed your astronomy experience being involved with video astronomy? Oh, this is far superior in that I, neither I nor the audience that I'm addressing has to wait, uh, you know, two or three hours for a long series of exposures and a processing uh, routine. So this is the, the near real time stuff is very interesting to me. I'm not so enamored of uh, trying to turn the mounting cams into imaging cameras. I want to use them for live video. And so I typically have tried to stick at a minute or less exposures, uh, even though I can do longer, uh, uh, maybe for my own interest. But when I'm in the process of showing people things, I like to stick to the shorter exposures. And that's where the Extreme and the MCHP both really shine. Okay, well, thanks. And uh, we're, we're going to go over and take a look at what a Nexstar 11 is all about. Uh, that's a telescope that's special to me because I have a number of them that are planned for the Ken Keller Memorial Observatory. And uh, Mike has one that has especially sharp optics. We were looking at Saturn the other night, and i got to tell you, the thing was performing like one of the sharpest telescopes I've ever looked through. And I'll, I'll have Mike explain his telescope. Does that sound all right? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, uh, this is Mike with his Nexstar 11. Mike, you want to tell them about what this telescope is? Okay, this is the next star 11. It's what I consider one of the nicest telescopes to uh, own. I've owned quite a few from a C8, a 60 millimeter refractor, and other ones. Uh, this is fully computer controlled. Uh, uh, Schmidt Kessengrain is 11 inches in diameter. 
and it has superb optics uh, and uh, done uh, many good uh, planetary imaging with this uh, and also with the uh, Malachem Extreme we've uh, produced some very fine images in alt as mode. Now, a lot of people used to think that you could only use a Nequatorium mount, a big expensive one, but this uh, the Extreme actually does a very good job with this and we can get uh, things that you couldn't get uh, 10 years ago just with this simple setup. It's very easy to use, it's very reliable, the setup is easy, and again, uh, the optics are uh, nice and sharp, and uh, you can do anything from double star uh, imaging to uh, deep sky. Yeah, this telescope actually was a landmark telescope uh, produced by Celestron that sort of set the, uh, the bar for other manufacturers at the time. It was way ahead of its time and things that were special to it. It has a carbon fiber tube construction which kept temperatures down. There's some other features about it. It's relatively lightweight, so very, very portable. It has a built-in GPS unit, so it knows where it is on the planet. You set this scope up and it turns around, it tells you where you're at, what time it is. It finds the uh, beginnings of the setup for your, your uh, alignment procedure, and when it's aligned, it very reliably finds the objects you'd like to go to via computer control. Show them the hand pad that you use to control your computer, Mike. Right? Okay. Now we'll spin it around here and you'll get an idea that the telescope moves. And then we're moving it right now in the azimuth and then when you move it in altitude it tilts up and down. And the hand controller is basically a little robot computer. It's like a, like a professor in a box. And not only does it help you find these objects in the sky, it'll also tell you about them. It has an info key right. and you can say, well, tell me about this object. It'll tell you how far away it is. There's a big catalog. You can tour the sky. The thing that's really great about these telescopes is by the time you put an 11 inch telescope combined with the melon cam, you've gone and increased your aperture capabilities to around 70 inches. So a melon cam makes this telescope almost as powerful as some of the most incredible telescopes that were ever built back in the uh, turn of the century when uh, George Hale built the Mount Wilson 60 inch telescope. This telescope right here will perform at a similar level to the 60-inch telescope without too much exaggeration. Isn't that true? Yes. We can actually see things like the Central Star and the Ring Nebula, M57. Even a 30-inch telescope cannot do that. No. So we easily see the Central Star. We see other objects that have such faint things as looking at the bridge between the two galaxies and M51, the whirlpool, as they're colliding in outer space. And this little telescope will actually show you that object with such detail that you think you're looking at a Hubble image. Welcome back, and I'd like to introduce another friend of ours. This is Greg Wilhite from Stockton, California. He's another amateur astronomer, and uh, he enjoys the Mellencam as well. This is uh, a Mellencam event because we use Mellencams as the primary source of our video experience here in astronomy. And Greg's uh, built his own telescope. He has a tremendous experience in, in astronomy. He has a home observatory that he built himself up in Stockton, California. And uh, his experience uh, that he's sharing with us here is incredible. His main interest is working with a group called the NSN, the Night Skies Network. And the Night Skies Network is a group that takes video astronomy images and shares them with other enthusiasts around the world. You can sign up from your computer, and by uh, looking at your screen, Greg comes to you live from Stockton and can share the images he captures with his telescopes. And this telescope is not his first, but is definitely, I think, one of his best because he designed it himself. And uh, Greg, you want to tell us about your show? Sure, sure. I like using fast Newtonians for the Mullen cam because the uh, video likes the fast F ratio. So this is a 14 and a half inch F 3.3, and with focal reduction, I usually run at about F 2.2. Uh, works very good for live video. I uh, use the Mullen Cam. This is a Mullen Cam Extreme. And uh, I'm hoping to do two to three minute exposures tonight. Uh, use the Mullen Cam with a Dazzle unit which converts the analog to digital. That goes to the computer. My Skies Network sees my rig here as a very large webcam. So it's a, it acts like a webcam feed and that way I can broadcast it uh, on, on the internet. So that's what we do. I'd like to introduce Ben Brown from uh, Modesto and I want to introduce his telescope. And Ben is like large aperture since I've met him a couple years ago. 
This isn't as big an aperture of a telescope as he's had, but this is a big aperture telescope, don't get me wrong. This telescope has tremendous power. He also can capably visually use it or hook it to a melon cam like we were explaining earlier. So I'm going to turn the scope uh, then to talk over to Ben. He can explain this telescope a little bit. Ben, you want to tell him about your scope? Okay, sure. Um, like you mentioned, I was in the visual mainly and I had a big 25 inch obsession which is awesome for visual, but when you put the melon cam on, the field of view is so narrow. So I want faster opposite, but big, big enough for visual also. So I, I love both. So I have designed and built a faster Newtonian with SciTech servo, which it tracks accurately to about 28 seconds. So it's good for, for modeling camera. Which means it's very stable that you can actually get an object in there and stay centered and then the camera can follow because yes. the camera needs a little bit of time to capture the image. Right. right? So yeah, it can't move for 28 seconds. Of, and, uh, so we can have a nice image on the screen. Yeah, and the images are stunning. When you see Mellencamp images uh, through the optics that these boys have got, it's just an incredible way of being able to uh, experience amateur astronomy. Now, this is a 20-inch mirror, is that right? Yes. So, in comparison to other telescopes, that's a, a middle of the road, but still a very large aperture and a portable scope. And you take this around to different places and astronomy, different sites, and where else do you observe? Well, we like to go to close to East Yosemite. Um, we like to go even higher. We have a place on Monitor Pass, about 3,000 feet. But we also like to do public outreach, so that's a little bit closer to town. But with a mountain camera, it doesn't matter. When did you get into astronomy? When did you start astronomy? Uh, 1994, when the comet hit Jupiter, it kind of sparked my interest. Things just changing out there, and I just wanted to see it. And it's been a graduating step. You've got more and more involved, and now here you are with large apertures, high tech cameras, very expensive eyepieces. <laughs> Wonderful hobby, isn't it? Yes, it's been exciting. There are some discouraging times when clouds come in, but when you get that moment of good seeing, it just really pays off. Are you having a good time with Joshua? Right? Oh, yes. It's amazing what you've done here, Tom. We're really impressed. It's just worth it coming down here just to see what you've done with the place. No, I encourage people to come here. Thanks for you to say so, and it's worth it that you found that to be uh, inviting to you, and I hope you come many times. Oh, yeah. Ben. We I, can't wait to see what you've uh, done next time we come. Uh, wonderful. <laughs>